Hey, Craig, look. Ooh. It's oh. our Today in 30 Friends. Hi, you guys. Happy hey. Monday. We hope you all had a great weekend. What a good-looking crowd, uh -huh. too. Uh, this is your digital show, Today in 30. We've got a lot to get to, so we should probably get started. We should. All right. SG is on the ground in Tokyo. She'll bring us the latest on that breaking news, the positive COVID-19 case on the women's gymnastics team and what it may mean for the rest of the game. Also, Jeff Bezos will join us ahead of his trip to space tomorrow. We'll meet the really special crew that's joining him and making history in outer space. And then an exclusive look at a massive reconstruction effort at Notre Dame Cathedral. That's two years after that devastating fire. And it's Make Ahead Monday, and we are brewing up some creative recipes for all the coffee lovers out there. And then we're going to show you some Olympic-inspired outfits so you can cheer on Team USA. Ready? Let's do it. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. Craig is with me. Savannah has made her way to Japan. And boy, do we have some big news out of Tokyo. And Savannah, this is not what we wanted to hear with just four days to go until the opening ceremony. SG, what's the latest there? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It is hard to imagine worse news for Team USA and its marquee event. Moments ago, here in Tokyo, we learned that a team member here has tested positive for COVID. The question is who and what it means for some of the most closely watched athletes here at the Games. The breaking news this morning, rocking Team USA as an alternate member of the USA women's gymnastics team tests positive. She is now quarantining in a hotel. The team, including all-star Simone Biles, traveled together to Japan last week. And another hurdle for Team USA, one of its biggest tennis stars is out too. Teen sensation Coco Goff won't take part in the games after testing positive for COVID. It's unclear if she had been vaccinated. In a tweet, Goff saying she is disappointed and that representing her country in the Olympics had always been a dream. Two South African athletes and one more athlete have tested positive in the athlete's village, while six athletes from Great Britain are self-isolated, confined to their rooms after coming into contact with someone who tested positive, although they still will be able to compete if their tests are negative. Meanwhile, competition continues. The U.S. men's basketball team cruising to a win over Spain in their final exhibition match, now headed to Tokyo. Our senior national correspondent, Tom Yamas, is also here. He was able to go out and take a look around after two weeks in quarantine. Despite the COVID state of emergency, Tokyo remains very busy. Almost everyone wearing a mask outside, and that's because the vaccine rollout has been very slow. Restaurants and bars asked not to serve alcohol at night, but not everyone's following those rules. Around the games, the host country, which has seen a recent surge in cases, is taking no chances, banning fans and families from the games, strict rules in Olympic Village, and even telling athletes they'll have to put the medals on themselves. So again, the news coming out of Tokyo, not great for USA Gymnastics. An alternate has tested positive for COVID. There are four alternates on Team USA, and we will await further word. But the U.S. Olympic Committee says it is not revealing the identity of the person who tested positive out of respect for her privacy. We'll continue to watch that. Let me turn now to NBC's Alan Abramson, who covers sports and covers the Olympics. I mean, first of all, this is potentially a game changer for USA Gymnastics. Put it in perspective for us, though. Savannah, we all knew, we all knew there were going to be positive COVID tests. But as you say, this is a game changer because to have a positive test on the U.S. gymnastics team, which is one of the marquee teams for the United States team, that is a big, big wow. A big wow. Just no getting around it. A big wow. I don't want to put you on the spot, but the question arises, do you know if these members of the team are vaccinated or not? No, no one knows. Uh, out of respect for their privacy, they've had the chance, the choice to be vaccinated or not. And we just can't go around saying, are you vaccinated? Are you not? We and, just can't. And some athletes have said that they didn't want to be vaccinated because they were concerned it might impact, inhibit their performance in some way. And, and that's their prerogative. They can have that belief, you, you know, uh, does it make more sense to be vaccinated? Does it not? That, that's their choice. Well, well, we don't want to speculate, but this is a team. And you imagine this is a team that's been practicing together. They're not actually in Tokyo right now. They're elsewhere in Japan. But what is the potential ripple effect here? Because you've got one person testing positive. If they're a close contact, that could make a big impact throughout the team. So let's just take a step back together. The idea here, as the Japanese government has explained it, is to test, trace, and isolate. That means you have to be within one meter, three feet more or less, for 15 minutes or more without a face mask. 
Gymnastics is not a sport that you can do readily with a face mask. Do you think that a team of young women is more or less likely to be around each other with or without face masks for 15 minutes within three feet of each other? That's the question. That's it, what we're all going to be asking. It is. I, I will say I read that statement from the Japanese authorities pretty closely. It did identify another individual connected to the team as a close contact. It's early, but it's potentially a good sign, Alan, that they haven't identified any others right now. Right now is the key because right now, what the, again, right now, what the Japanese government and everybody is wondering is who is a close contact? Who on that team has been within the close range of that individual? That's what we all want to know, need to know, and need to know as soon as possible. All right, Alan Abramson from NBC News, thank you so much. A uh, pleasure. It's here in Tokyo, just four days away from the games. It's hard to imagine something to be more uh, dramatic in terms of a development here, but we will continue to watch it. The competition is four days away now, but not only are we hearing this about the alternate at USA Gymnastics, we've also learned that Coco Goff, the teen tennis sensation, tested positive herself. She will not be able to compete here in Tokyo. Several other athletes have tested positive. So we'll continue to follow developments, guys. But for now, here in Tokyo, I'm going to send it back to you, Hoda and Craig, in the studio. Joining us now is the inaugural Blue Origin crew, Jeff and Mark Bezos, Wally Funk, and Oliver Damon. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Jeff. It's the eve. Are you ready? Tell me how you're feeling on this day. Uh, tomorrow we're going to space and uh, we're incredibly excited. I, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what it's going to be like. People who say they go into space, that they come back changed. Astronauts always talk about that, whether it's the thin limb of the Earth's atmosphere and seeing how fragile the planet is, that it's just one planet. So I can't wait to see what it's going to do to me. I had a chance to interview a Richard Branson, and he went up. He said, he, you know, he beat you by nine days, but you are going higher. Now, he says there's no competition between the two of you. What say you? I agree. Uh, you know, there's one person who was the first person in space. His name was Yuri Gagarin, uh, and that happened a long time ago. I think I'm going to be number 570 or something. You know, that's where we're going to be in this list. So uh, this isn't a competition. This is about building a road to space so the future generations can do incredible things in space. Well, We're excited to join the club. I'm <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm excited for all you guys. Wally, I'm expect especially excited for you. I want to do a whole story on you. You are incredible. You're going to be the oldest person up in space, 82 years old, long overdue. You should have been there in the 60s, but because of your gender, that was not to be. <laughs> so here we are. You're going to be up in space for 11 minutes. Describe how you see that in your mind's eye. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel it. It's going to be <clears throat> absolutely not having to, to touch or, or grab something. I can just float to it and, <laughs> and do my turns and do my rolls. And that's what I love to do because I've done everything in, on, on an outside world. And uh, I, I love it. And by the way, I love seeing you every day. No, oh, not, I love seeing you, too. Can I just tell you yeah. that we have been, you know, back when, when Wally was part of the Mercury 13 all the testing that she did, she outperformed all of the men. And we can confirm at 82 years old, she can still outperform all of the men. We've been doing training with Wally. She can outrun all of us. She is, you should do a piece on her because she's incredible. We're well, just trying to keep up. We are going to keep, we're going to stay on that, Wally. We do promise. All right, Mark, I don't know how many noogies uh, Jeff gave you as a kid, but at this moment in time, I'm sure he's more than made up for it. What was it like when he asked you to go aboard this voyage? <laughs> Uh, you know, it was just such a thrill. Um, you know, Jeff and I have had the opportunity to have a lot of adventures together um, throughout our, our lifetimes. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's really an honor for me to be able to, to tag along on this one and be there representing um, our mom and dad, our sister Christina, and just celebrating and, uh, you know, a lifelong dream. Well, we went from the oldest to Wally to the youngest, Oliver. Oliver, uh, you're 18 years old. I can't believe you get to do this. So how have you prepared for this moment? <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have great training here. And um, yeah, just simulating all the flights and um, expecting what to expect in space because we have no idea and it's pretty hard to imagine. 
but I'm just super excited and not nervous at all. Well, um, it's going to be a lot, uh, really, really cool. I, there are critics who say, look, this is, you know, again, Richard Branson and you, Jeff Bezos, rich guys on a joy ride. Um, what will come out of this? What, what concrete thing will come out of this trip? Well, if you, in order for space travel to become, to really build the infrastructure so that maybe all of our, the young people today, the next generation, how are they going to use space? Today, getting into space is so expensive that you can't do very many interesting things in space. It's just a small number of things you can do. They will invent new things to do. It's the job of this generation to build that infrastructure. And, uh, and of course, people said, look, we have so many problems here on Earth, and they're right. And we need to do both. And we've always done both. Mm -hmm. We need to focus on the here and now, and we need to look to the future. So we're building a road to space so that Oliver's generation can blow us away with amazing things and make life better here on Earth. Okay, somebody's got to take a selfie up there, and I nominate Oliver. Okay, I think he'll probably get the best one. <laughs> no, no, no brainer, you're right. All right, guys, have fun up in space. It's 11 minutes. We can't wait to hear all about it when you come back. Jeff and Mark Bezos, Wally Funk, Oliver Damon, thanks. Good luck, guys. Thanks, Oda. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Oda. Take care. Oh, how fun. Great. And how about that Wally Funk? Oh. I love all the guys, but there's something yes. about her. She is super special. She stood on the ground for 20, 30, 40 years and yeah. watched men go up in space when it should have been her. Yeah. And now it's her turn. Now so. it is Wally's yeah, turn. Good for her. She has earned that trip mm -hmm. for sure. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. This morning, we're taking you inside one of Paris's most famous landmarks. Now, take a look. It's right behind me. And actually, from the outside, it is hard to imagine the damage within. Of course, you see the scaffolding. You see that crane right there. That is just a hint of what it looks like inside. Now, we got rare access. We got a tour by the chief architect, by the French general who's overseeing the whole project, who brought us inside the restoration effort and the race to save Notre Dame. And they say that it will be ready, that they will open up those doors in some capacity by 2024, just in time for the Paris Olympics. Carson is in the house. Uh, by the way, it has been more than two years since a fire tore through the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. The solemn sanctuary that stood for centuries was destroyed in just a matter of hours. And now, though, hope is rising from the rubble. NBC's Molly Hunter received an exclusive tour inside the cathedral. Hey, Molly, good morning. Hey guys, good morning from Paris. Now, when you look at that facade, it's hard to tell exactly how damaged that cathedral is inside. Then you see the scaffolding, the crane. It is a totally different story inside. And we got a rare tour of the ongoing restoration efforts, and they say it's all going according to plan. Take a look. Returning Notre Dame to the faithful. To its former splendor is a work in progress following the catastrophic fire April 15th, 2019. How long is it going to take to rebuild Notre Dame? The famous lead spire crashing down, plunging like an arrow into the heart of this sacred space. And because of all that lead, we suited up in protective gear. All right, let's go. NBC News was granted rare access, an exclusive look at the restoration effort. The magnificent nave transformed a jungle of scaffolding. We are at ground level of Notre Dame. There are more than a thousand tons of scaffolding around me. We are about to take an elevator more than a hundred feet up to where the fire started. This is amazing. And here at the top of the damage vault. This is the nave of the cathedral. And you can see the stained glass windows right here. And take a look, we can see some of the charred remains. The wood supports are temporary braces for the crumbling flying buttresses more than 800 years old. Yeah. Chief yeah. architect Philippe Villeneuve explains each one is tailored individually using modern technology, but medieval know-how. One of the cathedral's most prized relics, the rooster on top of the spire slammed through the roof right here. I mean, I've seen the picture. He says he had something symbolic, charged with emotion because Notre Dame is a mythical, mystical place. But the obvious damage is here, and it's so much worse than it looks from the outside. We are so high up. Hope you're not afraid of heights. But this is where the ceiling was. This is this gaping hole where the spire collapsed in. And this right here is the focus of the reconstruction. Despite the modern designs that have cropped up, the new spire will be true to its Gothic history. 
General Jean-Louis Georgelin heads up the ambitious project, pointing out the lead still streaked outside, gargoyles looking on. You'll think you'll be able to open your doors in 2024 in some way. Ma priorité numéro His singular priority, he says, is to open the cathedral in some capacity in three years. And thank you very much to the United States of America and God bless America. Hey everyone, Anthony Contrino here, host of today's original series, Saucy. And in today's season finale, it is all about coffee. So I am continuing that theme on Bake Ahead Monday by making a big vat of cold brew that will get me through the week. Once that's done, I'm gonna take that cold brew and turn it into these delicious, decadent mocha truffles. So grab a glass of coffee and tune in. We're sipping away over here. It is Make Ahead Monday. We are brewing up some goodness. Most of us start our mornings with a cup of joe. We're six. We're six. Anthony Contrino, chef and host of Saucy yeah. on Today All Day, Little is here with some exciting ways to level up your cup. Anthony, good morning. We wish you were here. I know. Hey, guys. I miss you guys so much. How's everything? We're good. doing good. And um, it, these drinks, the truffles, I mean, everything you've got going on. Uh, I didn't realize, I know so much of your show focuses on Italian cooking, but coffee is huge in Italian cooking, huh? Coffee is huge in Italian culture in general, and I love cooking with coffee. So this week's episode is all about espresso, but I'm going to show you guys how to make some Cold brew. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> you got so many folks that spend so much money during the summer, especially on these cold brew coffees. I didn't realize that you yep. could make it so easily at home. Where do we start? So so easy. Two ingredients. People, like you said, spend five bucks a clip for these things. And this batch will last you all week. So I have just some coffee, eight ounces. That's ground for cold brew. The grind is really important, whether you're making espresso, Turkish coffee, cold brew percolator. So Buy whole bean and have your barista grind it specifically for cold brew. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding two cups of water. Just give it a stir to get the grinds nice and saturated. Mm -hmm. And then another four cups of water. And that's it. Hmm. So that's it. Let me believe I poured that all in. Seal it up. I keep it right on my counter for 12 hours up to 16. I usually do it at like 9 o'clock at night, ready by 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh. Then I strain it. I do it through a fine mesh strainer, which catches the bulk of the grinds, obviously. But then I also like to go back and run it through a cheesecloth. And what that's going to do is it's going to take out the finer sediments. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually a reusable cheesecloth, which you can get online now, so that it's better for the environment. Really cool. Anthony, isn't cold brew better for, like, digestion and acid and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so because you're using cold water, it's less bitter. And when purchasing a coffee, you want to go for a dark roast and avoid things that have, like, citrus notes. You're really looking for, like, dessert descriptors. So chocolate notes, caramel notes. And um, so I just poured that through. And you can see there's, like, a sludge yeah. Yeah. that kind of gets left behind when it sits. Leave that because it's not the best mouthfeel. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Into the fridge. And it's like a one-to-one -one ratio with water. Yeah. So you do like 50% of the concentrate, 50% of the water. Oh, okay. And I understand you can take so, that and you can turn it into mocha truffles? You sure can. <laughs> um, so basically <laughs> what I did is I took some of the cold brew, a little heavy cream and some vanilla, brought it to a simmer on the stovetop, and I'm pouring it over some finely chopped chocolate. Mm. Let it sit for a minute so that the chocolate permeates. Make sure you're using real chocolate and not chips here. Um, so that it melts properly. So once again, let it sit for a minute. And then you just whisk it till nice and smooth. Oh, my which goodness. Takes this is a minute. so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I like to finish it with a little butter a for a little bit more decadence and a nice mouthfeel. Did you really make these or did you buy these? <laughs> of course. I mean, Don't insult me, Craig. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Into the fridge for two hours until it's nice and set. I use a cookie scoop because it makes it fast, and you'll get the perfect portions. Hmm. And this is about a, um, a gum gumball size. Yeah. These are, I mean, as you guys probably can attest, they're super decadent, so a little goes a long way. And then just roll it. It doesn't have to be perfect. After all, it is mimicking a, a truffle, which yeah. are not perfect circles. So 
We got to get like you back you. in the studio. This is ridiculous. I know. We got to get you out of your kitchen. <laughs> Please do. So I like to coat mine in tempered chocolate like I did for you guys because it has like that nice crunchy shell. Mm -hmm. But you can do cocoa powder. You can do wow. confectioner sugar, nuts, or Anthony. even candy melts. Anthony. This is absolutely delicious. I was trying to talk to you sooner, but my mouth was full of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for my decaf virgin um, chocolate martini here. You're I will very say it's welcome. Not quite the same as Craig's, but this, this espresso, the trick. This espresso martini is fantastic. <laughs> I don't even like espresso or martinis for that matter. But this is fantastic. Anthony, you can thank learn you. how to make it on today's episode. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And as you just said, you can learn uh, more because the season finale of Saucy, it airs today at 11 a.m. on today.com slash all day or today all day on Peacock. And you can catch every episode of Saucy on today.com slash saucy. Hoda is headed to Tokyo later this week for the Olympic fun. And even though most of us aren't going, we still get into that spirit right here at home. Yeah, and to get us in the spirit, uh, our style expert, Amy E. Goodman, who has some fun Olympic-inspired fashion, and Women's Day editor-in-chief and author of Your Fully Charged Life, Megan Murphy. She's getting creative. She's got some DIY stuff. It's going to be fun. Okay, so we can all do this, and you, we can mention that you can shop right along with us with that QR code on your screen. Amy, let's start with style. Olympic style is so much fun. I feel like the whole country is going to be patriotic. Let's dress up. Let's dress. Yeah, and your whole family got in on the action, huh? We really did. And we, my family is crazy for the Olympics. And since we can't be there, we want everybody to dress up and let the athletes know we're cheering them on. Starting with some more formal or dressier attire for a party that you might throw with my family, my mom, who is wearing a blue and white striped maxi. Very, very tasteful and fun. Mm -hmm. This is from oh, TJ Maxx, beautiful. also a sun saver hat and some nice solid espadrilles as well, which are great for walking on the grass if you're entertaining outside. And then for my daughter, she's wearing red, white, and blue. She's got the solids going, but with some great details. So her red top with a little tie, it also has eyelet on it, some fun punchy earrings, and her shorts. The top and the shorts are only $10 wow. each. And then wrapping it up with some leather sneakers. Now, if you want a faux leather sneaker, you can pop to today.com, and we have that option for you there. And then for me, I'm wearing blue and white in a Santorini dress, really flowy from a maxi dress and this is from pink lily really nice and breezy um, i love the feeling of this so we had a lot of blue and white and stripes in this group some strappy sandals to round it out and then of course some fringe earrings which are done in recycled leather and wow. you can find this at the salvage heart on etsy.com amy so your family cute. by the way your daughter Beautiful. is your mom's gorgeous and your daughter is so cool <laughs> yes. i want to be her friend oh, she's <laughs> so growing up yeah this is a really beautiful dress up look now let's go to some fancier athleisure okay so this is worn yeah. by emily goldberg one of our family and our her producers. entire family let's mm -hmm. take a look yeah this is really comfy cool athleisure so you can feel you're just so as cool as that. the athlete so she is wearing a bomber a flag tank ceremony closing jeans all of this from Ralph Lauren. And her sneaks are so hot. They're the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38 Fly Ease from Nike, which are gonna be available in early August. And her husband, Josh, here with his USA NBC store, Team USA Red Jersey. He's got, the, of course, the joggers from Ralph Lauren. And again, Nike SB Paradunk Low, 100 bucks for those amazing sneaks available at the end of the month. Don't forget, you can get your Team Olympics hat available in a couple different colors for only $32 at the NBC store. And now that I've done my heat, I'm going to pass on the torch to Megan Murphy. Wait, 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 one second. We need the we kids. We're Noah Maya. and Maya. Wait, before you pass oh. the torch, one second. Sorry. Oh. We forgot Noah and Maya. We got to see them. Yes. yes. They are. Look how cute oh this is. Our cuties, they are like our Olympic swimmers, right? So we got Noah, he's wearing Hurley with a touch of flag, Americana flag swim shorts, and these adorable shoesies from Old Navy. What a sweetheart. <laughs> and Maya, so cute. she is our star in her swimsuit from Old Navy and her accessories from Cat and Jack from Target. Those bows, six for, you get $6 for only three little bows. So cute. All right, pass that, pass flag, that flag to Megan in Jersey. Here we go, Megan, 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 go for the gold. Yes.
Oh, please come back with us tomorrow because we have superstar John Mayer. He's going to be performing some songs off of his new album. Have a great Monday. We'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow, right here on Today. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.